morning, everybody. It's Monday morning here at Mental Watches HQ. I uh, wanted to do a quick unboxing with you guys because I got a package in of a couple watches I'm excited about. Uh, they came to me via my good buddy Jack out of Singapore. Uh, mostly, some of you guys might know him. It's uh, Jack Long YF on Instagram. He's a really good collector. We've been friends for many years and he collects primo stuff. So I know the watches are going to be good. Um, so let's take a look and see what we got. And Jack, thank you for your patience. Uh, This makes me nervous. It says security checked. Jack, you need to uh, pack your watch a little better. There's two watches in here, substantial value. It looks like it's just like a padded pack. Uh, but we'll look past that for a second. So security check, let's hope they didn't tamper with the watches. I hope they're in here. So we're gonna open them up, take a look at what we got, do a little inspection, and talk about it. seem like customs open these up, so we should be good to go. Let's put the bubble wrap. Okay, we have two watches. Let's see what we got. First watch is Eric Clapton Universal Geneve Tri Compacts, one of my favorites. And also one of my favorites, I already know what it is, but let's see, let's do a little reveal. Zenith El Primero A386 Chronograph. Honestly, two of my favorite watches from the 60s eras of chronographs. So let's talk about them. First, we have the Tri Compacts. Uh, the first thing I look at when I look at these watches is flip it over and I make sure the serial number and reference number, and we'll get some close ups for you guys. So we'll, you know, put them in the video to make sure that that serial and reference number are visible. Now, a lot of the times on these case backs, they got very, very worn. Uh, and just because the engravings are so light, they would wear off very easily. So it's a very big bonus when you do have them on the case back. It's not a deal killer for me per se when they don't, uh, it's just a question of value. So we're gonna loop it. 881-101 slash 01. So the slash 01 is uh, denoting the Clapton dial. Uh, it's serial number visible on the back, 25XXXXX. So, so far so good. Uh, so these watches were produced in the 60s. I think they were a really big step up for UG. Um, I'm a huge fan of UG. If you guys hadn't known, you can see my earlier videos. I think Universal Geneve, now defunct, um, was doing some amazing stuff back in the day. They were creating really complicated watches and interesting watches before anybody else was uh, at reasonable price points. Uh, you know, here we have a triple date calendar chronograph with a moon phase complication and it probably cost you a few hundred bucks back in the day whereas if you wanted to get one in the 60s from say Patek Philippe you were spending thousands of dollars. Um, also these 1960s watches were a big step up for me in terms of the sportiness of them because the tri-compact chronographs from the 40s and 50s were very very dressy. Uh, not that they're not cool uh, but these were really a, a sporty watch compared to what they made in the 40s and 50s. Uh, why is this called the Clapton? Well, very simply put, Eric Clapton was seen to be wearing the, this exact model with a uh, panda dial, white and black registers, uh, while playing the guitar at concerts. And so we know that he wore this watch, he owned this watch. Eric Clapton's a big watch guy. Uh, so it's cool. So this uh, watch was deemed the Eric Clapton Tri Compacts. This watch came in four different variations. Quick story time. Uh, when I was looking before I was a dealer to buy my first Universal Geneve Tri Compacts, I went down the street actually from where my office is now located to veteran uh, amazing watch dealer Matthew Bain you know, Matthew Bain Inc. And he had four of these in stock. He, so I told you before they made four dial, vari dial variations. They made a white dial, black dial, a teal dial, and what they call the exotic dial. Um, he had all four in stock. I was really after this one actually. So I went down with a little bit of money in my pocket and he wasn't there that day, but Ali from his office was helping me out. Um, 
and the white dial had just sold. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what else do you guys have? Black dial on hold. Teal dial, part of Matt's personal collection. So the last one they had, which is the one I was actually the least interested in, and now is my personal favorite, was the exotic dial. It was in perfect 10 out of 10 condition. Um, I really like the exotic dial because uh, there's no contrast on the top register, so it looks like a three register uh, chronograph. And we'll uh, show you guys what we're talking about. And long story short, I bought the watch for at an all-time record price at the time, this is, I don't know, 2014, 2015, uh, for like 9700 bucks, which was a crazy price at the time. It was very high. Um, like a year and a half later, one sold in Phillips Auction for 30 grand, and then the market exploded. Um, so yeah, really cool watch. Uh, so what I like to do next is I loop the dial, so we see correct end links, correct uh, double green, gay phrase bracelet dated correctly 1969 general inspection of the watch to see condition of the dial see if there's any marks Boom, looks original we can give it a quick uv blast just to make sure and we'll explain what i'm doing in a future video as to uh, checking loom and understanding what you're looking at so we do a quick uv blast it looks like perfect tritium it glows while it's exposed and then immediately extinguishes uh, correct for the era. Uh, really nice watch. Thank you, Jack. Uh, case looks very strong. Maybe lightly polished, but very, very nice with nice bezels. Uh, bezel clean, dot over 90 bezel, similar to the popular premium Omega Speedmasters. Um, but yeah, really nice watch. Final, final cool little quirky thing about this watch. Does it have the original crystal? No, it does not. Not really a value thing, but kind of cool when they still have the original crystal, which were stamped the U in the middle, uh, inside the crystal, so you knew it was a, a UG crystal. All right, moving on. Seriously, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite 60s chronographs is the El Primero reference A386. Uh, the A386 was the first watch by Zenith to incorporate their 3019 PHC automatic chronograph movement, which was a huge thing back in the day because it was the very first automatic chronograph, chronograph movement watch. And uh, it was so popular that even when Rolex uh, decided that they needed to make a movement for their Daytona line, they didn't trust any, they didn't have an automatic chronograph movement in-house, so they decided to outsource it, and the only people they trusted were Zenith. That's why we have the now famous and popular Zenith chronographs. So, same thing as the UG. We're going to look at the case back to make sure the serial numbers are still visible, and Jack so politely puts case back stickers over it to protect them. I can already see from here without the loop that the serial number is faint, but it is present. Again, these, you know, uh, these engravings on both of these watches were very thin, so they wore off, you know, without even being, having to be polished. They were just, you know, worn over time like a lot of cases do, so it's a very big bonus when they do have them. Uh, correct ZJ end links on this, what they call ladder, also gay phrase bracelet. Very cool. Uh, what a beautiful watch. I mean, I really watch honestly they just don't make them and this like this anymore even zenith you know because they couldn't beat this they started making this watch over and over and over again new iterations uh and what i love about the a386 versus other el primero references of the same era you know 60s and 70s is that this is the only one that is not a cushion case uh so it's a larger size with long gloves a little bit of a thinner profile um and just just a stunning watch so same thing we're going to loop the dial Make sure good old Jack didn't scratch it. And it looks super clean. Excellent condition. Same thing, the loom looks original, but let's give it a little blast with the UV light. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, really excited about these two watches. Jack, thank you for selling them to me. Um, for me, 60s era watches that are not Rolex uh, don't get much better than this. These are two of the best chronographs that were made in the era, uh, and I'm looking forward to enjoying them and I guess uh, unfortunately selling them sometime soon. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, uh, comment below. I don't know all the YouTube jargon, subscribe, like, whatever. Do what you gotta do, guys. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.